He said, my peace do I give to you. He said, I want you to understand that in the world, you're going to have trouble. And he said, I'm not dealing with the world because the world is subject to me. He said, so what I'm going to do is tender over to you my peace, my settledness. I'm undisturbed. I'm in the back of the boat. All hell is breaking loose on the outside and I'm asleep on the inside. I have peace where there is chaos. I have peace where there is trouble. I have peace where there is sickness. I have peace where there is fear. I have peace when there is poverty. I have peace because I didn't create any of that. Therefore, in the world I operate in, I am not moved. Because once I said, peace, be still, peace got busy being still. Hi, and welcome to Stone Point Community Church, where your life is made better. Thank you for listening to our podcast, and thanks for supporting the ministry. If you enjoyed today's message, why don't you be a blessing and share it with a friend? We appreciate you and pray for God's very best in your life. Hallelujah. If you would, let's go to Luke uh, 21. Luke 21, verse 14. Luke, the 21st chapter and the 14th verse. And Jesus says, Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair on your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with enemies and armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Look at somebody and tell them with all the ebullience you can muster. Thank God for the hard places. You can do a little better than that. I have this vision in my head that one day I'm going to ask that and I'm going to hear it like (laughs) in scripture you will find through multiple accounts in the gospels where the disciples were very concerned about what's going to happen. How will we know? What do we do? When's the end coming? And in many ways, he gave some levels of details regarding some of the things that would happen, but he never said there's a specific time. And anyone that tells you that they know the time is a liar. Because Jesus himself said, I don't know the time. He said, but what I do know 
is that the time must be full. In other words, there's a season for everything. And things have to go through particular seasons. And the part that I wanted to help you to understand is he starts off saying in verse 14 to settle it in your hearts. And then verse 26 he says, because men's hearts will fail them for fear. And one of the things that has to always be understood when it comes to seasons and moments and times where you are in hard places, that you have to protect your heart and understand the season and the situation that you have found yourself in. If you go to Proverbs 4.23 out of the NLT, please. He says, to guard your heart above what? Notice what he says, for it. The King James says, out of your heart flows the issues of life. And the Bible talks about, even in John uh, 14, I believe it is 27, John 14, 27. Got it? Yep, that's it. Put in the Amplified, please. He says, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be neither. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourself to be fearful and, 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 he says, I left you my peace. I bequeathed it to you. Bequeathing something requires the death of the testator. In other words, it requires the death of the person who bequeathed something to you. Uh, You receive no inheritance if the person is still alive. And he said, the reason why I gave my life for you is so that you would have my peace. And when you had my peace, he said, don't allow yourself to get disturbed. Because once you allow yourself to be disturbed, your heart gets shook. And that's why I said, you got to settle in your heart. Because your heart, if it's not settled, it'll fail from fear. He said men's, men's hearts will fail them because they haven't settled it in their heart. They haven't settled it in their heart. This is going to be a fight. They haven't settled it in their heart. This might be a battle. They haven't settled it in, his, in their hearts. This might not go exactly the way that I thought it would. But at the end of it all, the peace that I have, no man gave me that peace. No man can take that peace from me. And he said, you have to guard your heart above all things. Because out of your heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart flows the issues of your life. And so if your mouth is saying wrong things, when he says, to whom shall the arm of the Lord be revealed? Isaiah 53, verse 1. It's very simple to give online. First, you can scan the QR code. Second, you can go right to scc.church, find that donate icon, click, fill out the required details, and that's it. You're done. Look at what it says. Who has which report? It doesn't say who heard the report. It doesn't say that's the only report. If you're asking somebody if you believe my report, then you have to have another report. to. And he says, who has made the decision to believe not what the doctor says, not what Google says. Amen. Amen. Not what WebMD says. 
but the report God gave you. Right. In contrast to other reports. Right. And he says, who hath believed our report? Who believed it? The one to whom the arm of the Lord will be revealed. He said, the ones who don't believe that report, they'll never see the fullness of what God has because they're struggling with settling things in their hearts. They're struggling with double-mindedness. They're struggling with, I believe, but. Everything's a but. I believe, but. I think God can do it, but. I know God can, but. And without it being settled in your heart, there's no possible way to see the arm of the Lord. Because he said, the ones who believed our report are the ones whom I show myself and reveal my arm to. Now, it becomes conditional because the kingdom is handled differently than everything else. A kingdom operates off a of dominion. It, offers, it operates off of rule. It operates off of realm. It operates off of royalty. Everything related to a kingdom has rank and order. There is no possibility in a kingdom to have a rank that was not given to you. See, we live in a democracy or we're actually a republic. We're not a democracy technically. We actually are a republic. Amen. To the republic. One nation. Under God. Hey, look at y'all, under God. <laughs> you know they took that out, right? But anyway. So <clears throat> we are a republic, but we are a democratically established republic. In that you have people who believe they have equal say because you've given them equal voice. I've given them equal voice because I gave them a keyboard and a computer screen. I gave them a phone with an app on it. And now you have leveraged the voice to think all voices are the same. But in a kingdom, you come against the king. If you take a shot at the king, you better kill him. Because if you don't, It's a wrap for you. And the truth of the matter is, even if you did kill him, it's still probably going to be. Are, are you following me? And so we have learned, because we are not in a kingdom, we have learned a society of people that think all voices are the same. And that all reports are the same. All reports in a kingdom don't carry the same weight. If you say this is something and the king says it is not, there is zero discussion anymore. There, there is no, let me debate the point. Well, I'm going to take you to the Supreme Court. You just heard from the Supreme Court. And so <clears throat> when Jesus began to deal with, he said, my peace do I give to you. He said, I want you to understand that in the world, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. And he said, I'm not dealing with the world because the world is subject to me. He said, so what I'm going to do is tender over to you my peace, my settledness. I'm undisturbed. I'm in the back of the boat. All hell is breaking loose on the outside and I'm asleep on the inside. I have peace where there is chaos. I have peace where there is trouble. I have peace where there is sickness. I have peace where there is fear. I have peace when there is poverty. I have peace because I didn't create any of that. Therefore, in the world I operate in, I am not moved. Because once I said, peace, be still, Peace got busy being still. <laughs> so he said, the peace that I give you 
is the type of peace that no worldly thing can do for you. So that you guard your hearts in a way that you don't let it be troubled. And then I like how he said, neither let it be afraid. Go back to so John uh, 14, 26, 27. There you go. Put in the Amplified. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and I bequeath it to you. Not the world type of peace. And he said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Right? Neither let them be. Isn't it funny how troubled and afraid are not the same thing? For my heart to be troubled, it would have to be based on data. For my heart to be afraid, it would have to be based on expectation. For my heart to be troubled, I got to have some type of data. Something happened. Something occurred somewhere that I have either seen, heard, or know that now has got me troubled. To be afraid is to anticipate something that you think is coming, but you are not sure that it's coming. You have no proof that it's coming. You would be shocked at how many people trade their peace for an expectation that may or may not happen. And, and here's the thing. In order to ensure certainty, Satan has to get you afraid. Because now the very thing, remember Job said, the very thing I feared has come upon me. Why did it come upon him? Because he feared it. And he was so consumed with it that it gave it power to operate in a way that brought him under subjection to the very thing he was afraid of. Amen. You'd be shocked at the things people are afraid of. Well, I've heard this, I've heard that. I've, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Uh, well, I don't know either, but here's what I can tell you. God never sleeps. The Bible says God never sleeps. He never slumbers. Therefore, there is no sense in both of us being up all night. If he's up, he's got it, and I'm going to let him have it. But once you give in to fear, and you become afraid of what doesn't happen or, or hasn't happened, you become subject to the very thing that you're afraid of. That's why I said you have not been given a spirit of but of why didn't he say you have not been given the spirit of fear because I'll reveal to you how false the fear is why did he say I gave you the spirit of uh huh talk to me he didn't say I gave you knowledge to show you that the fear is not real he said I gave you a soundness of mind I gave you love. I gave you power. So that no matter what it is you fear, he said, I've got it. And I've also equipped you with what it is you need so that when it comes, you know how to not put your mouth on it. Because the kingdom is voice activated. <clears throat> this is why when Jesus said, the spirit of God is upon me, and he said to do what? To preach, to speak the gospel to the poor. Everything is based on understanding your position in Christ as it relates to what you keep saying. And people have no idea that what comes out of their mouth is seeds. As soon as they speak it, it's like you're spitting sunflower seeds, not the shell. The seed, everywhere. And then later on, you're mad because there's all these sunflower plants growing everywhere. 
And you're like, where'd they come from? Your mouth. Because when he says they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the what? How, how, how come he just didn't say Jesus conquered it all, so don't worry about it anymore? Why didn't Jesus say when I die, I don't need to bequeath you peace because there'll be peace. Amen. Why didn't he just say I handled it all, don't worry about it, I got you. Why would he tell you that this is how you got to live? Why make a point? If he handled it all and destroyed it all in the sense of eliminating all threat against us as believers, why not just say, hang on till I die? Once I die, don't worry about it. There will be no more fear. There will be no more fear when you get into heaven. And let's go to Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse six. It's very simple to give online. There are only five steps to follow. Step one, go to our website, www.stonepointcc.org, or for short, scc.church. Step two, then click on PayPal or donate icon located at the top of the page. Step three, you can ask for whatever amount you desire to give. After you have done so, click the donate option down below. Step four, on this page, you have to notate what you are giving for, where it says add a note. Whether it's tithing, offering, building fund, love offering, guest offering, or so on. Step five, fill out the required details, then scroll to the bottom of the page and click donate now. And you're done. Uh, show me five. <clears throat> remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things and now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his and shall destroy with the brightness. He said, I need you to understand, me and you, we had this conversation already. He said, but I'm going to write it to you and I'm going to remind you of something that we talked about. What we talked about was the spirit of the Antichrist is being held at bay. He can't do whatever he wants to do because he that letteth is in his way, which is the Holy Ghost that is in you. He said, but once you are pulled out, then the true wicked one in all evil shall be fully revealed and it will operate without impunity or without course because it has no body, there is no believer that is still here to stand against it. He said, but as long as the church is present and the church is here and the church is full of the Holy Ghost and the church understands its position and the church understands its mouth and the church understands its rights. He said, everything Satan is trying to do, he's working in the shadows, but his fullness of what he's capable of will never be revealed until this body is gone. Until we are taken out. And then he's got free course. Because there's nobody who's able to hold him back. But as long as you are here, so then it makes more sense when Jesus is saying to you, don't let your heart get troubled. Neither, because what I'm leaving you is my peace. And the reason why I'm leaving you my peace is because yes, all hell is still gonna break loose in the world, but I put you here as a safeguard. 
I put you here as a watchdog. I put you here as a sheepdog. I put you here to protect the flock so that the world may come to know who I am. Because the moment you are pulled out, Satan's going to do exactly what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, when he wants to do it. And the only thing that keeps him at bay is the fact that the Holy Ghost that resides in each and every one of you is still here proclaiming, speaking, holding back, and keeping him. He said the only way he can do what he wants to do is the one who let it has to, has to be let him out the way. So he can do whatever he wants. So then, <clears throat> for you as a believer, you have to understand who you are. And, that's, and when trouble comes, how many of you understand Satan's got the exact same plan? If you start paying, listen, if you live long enough, and I'm praying that you're smart so you do live long enough. Because you don't get old by being stupid. I just <laughs> hope you understand that. But the longer you live, the more you realize Satan does the same thing. Over and over and over and over. He is a one-hit wonder. He's a one-trick pony. Literally. One-trick pony. He has the exact same. Now, now you would ask yourself, why doesn't he switch it up? Because it works. You're like, well, why didn't you do something? Because it works on you. It comes the exact same way and it works. So why change? If anything, he's lazy. Why be creative when it, when it works? And we have to be very careful to understand you can't let this stuff work. You cannot allow it to work. Look, look at Psalms 91, verse 1. <clears throat> there are principles that govern the anointing. <clears throat> and... There is where God will summon, you know, he will summon you and then he has to sanctify you and then he has to separate you. And the summoning of you is the call. It's, it's that little thing inside of you that annoys you, that you are upset with things you didn't used to be upset with. You used to watch stuff that you, now it's like kind of like bothers you. You used to listen to stuff that you were like, this was my jam. And then you listen to it now and you're like, what was I thinking? That is the summons. That's the little itch inside of you that says, you know what? There's something deeper here. There's something more. And then the second thing God's got to do is sanctify you. In other words, he's got to get you positioned to be used by him. To make you in right standing with him by placing his spirit on the inside of you. Amen. And then there comes that separation where you start to remove yourself away from things that you didn't used to deal with anymore. You start to get away from people that you used to deal with that you have learned the new buzzword is they're toxic. Amen. Right? And so you start realizing in your walk that I just, I, I can't really be around so-and-so. And the first thing that'll happen the moment you start making that decision is so-and-so amps it up. They wanted to see you once a week, now they want to see you every day. And, 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 you, and you, because you're not paying attention, you have no idea that's a weapon. Because what Satan realizes is the moment you realize you're summoned, the moment you realize you've been sanctified, even if you messed up, you're still sanctified. Even if you do crazy stuff, you are still sanctified. 
Even if you think stupid, you are still, if you are a believer in Christ, you are sanctified, not by your own abilities, but by the blood of Christ. When the blood of Jesus is entered into your life, you are made right with God. You are no more right with God from the moment you said, Jesus, come into my life. If you are 50 years into this thing, you are still right. You're sanctified. The place where he fights you is being separated. <laughs> the place where he fights you is, is where you try to keep yourself away from. Keep yourself out of. Keep yourself from hearing. Because if you can ever get truly separated... He said, if you settle in your heart, your heart won't fail you for fear. See, that's when you get detached. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, for him to get to you, he's really got to work hard. Because you are unattached to things and people. People call you, you ain't heard from in, since Hector was a pup. You're like, oh my God, where'd you come from? I just called to give you some news. I don't want to hear your news. I don't want to hear it. No, no, you, it's, it's about, I don't care. Glad to hear from you. Really, I'm not. Thanks for calling. Actually, I'm not thankful. Goodbye. The whole point of that is to get you disturbed. The reports are to get you disturbed. The doctor comes in and says, blah, 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 is to get you disturbed. The situation comes in and says, is to get you disturbed. Because if you can get disturbed and you start speaking it, <clears throat> so my child's in the, we were in the hospital, uh, I didn't give birth. She did. Um, <laughs> just want to make sure that's clear. <laughs> now, nowadays, the world is confused, thinking that men can give birth, and you know. So, <sighs> want to be very clear. She did that. Um, I had to sleep in that crazy chair that they have, so I think I should get some credit because that busted my back all the way up. Um, <clears throat> I'm still in pain from that. But, <clears throat> you know, the truth of the matter is, with Ari, they came and said, there's something wrong with her ear. And they made us go through this whole system of nonsense, doctor appointment, this, that, and the third, to come to find out there's nothing wrong. It's just water shifting because she was just born. So tell me why. Tell me why. Lady comes with her little cart. She's testing one side, flips him over, tests the other side, and comes out with the exact same thing. This time, because the last time we're like, oh my God, what do we got to do? What do we have to do? And it didn't dawn on me until we were the second appointment in a week later that what this was. So this time, we literally, she must have thought we was crazy because we looked at each other and just laughed. And so she's like, well, I could probably come back later before we leave. Yeah, you go ahead, you do that. <laughs> and when she walked out, we just looked at her she's like, you got no other tricks up your sleeve. Amen. So she comes back before she leaves, tests the other one, no problem. Do you understand, I, I use that only to help you see a point. I, I was, we were in a, um, a marital counseling, uh, uh, pre, what do you call it, pre-guidance, marital guidance, whatever you call it, session, pre-marital, thank you. And uh, this couple kept saying things about what the doctors keep saying about their children. And I'm like, you got to stop saying that. And they both keep saying it. To this day, anytime I've heard anything related to them, they still 
keep saying the same types of things. You watch their Facebook posts and they literally are the ones speaking. Now, let me explain something to you. If you're the one who keeps him at bay, then you're also the one who can release him. We okay? So if you can release it, why would you do that on your own children? Why would you release him on your own family? Why would you release him on your spouse? Cause, cause your spouse to have to fight off stuff like they ain't got enough. And I'm telling you, this happens all the time. And it's a place of once you get disturbed, you become the disturbance. Once you get, you know how they say there's no atheists in the foxhole? You ever heard that? That means when bullets are flying, everybody believe in God. You ever notice how when all hell breaks loose, the first thing people turn to is to try to figure out God? When things are going well, they're just not interested. I'm amazed. No one calls before they do something wrong. It's always... I need to meet with Pastor Amy right now. What, what happened? <laughs> you didn't call me before you went and did that nonsense. But now that it all blew up. And you want me to separate what you should have. <laughs> Psalms 91, verse 1. Oh, you're already there. How'd you know? I've been attending Stone Point Community Church for 11 years now, and I absolutely love it. It's my church home. I have a three-year-old daughter named Mayana, and it's extremely important for me to set the right example for her when it comes to honoring God with my finances. God has been so good to me with my business that tithing has given me a steady flow of income. I'm a hairstylist and I am fully convinced that because I've been faithful with my tithing that my clients book appointments and come in like clockwork. Before they weren't seeing me as often, now they see me on a consistent basis even after doubling my price for my haircuts. My name is Ator Benjamin and this is my tithing testimony. He that dwelleth where? Shall. I will. Go back, verse 1. He that dwells in a secret place, most high shall abide under can I can I posit a thought if I'm abiding under the shadow of the almighty then that means in a lot of ways I could be considered hiding and I could be hiding not because I'm afraid but because that's my protection. Yes? But while I'm dwelling and while I'm abiding, while I'm dwelling in the secret place, while I'm abiding in the shadow and under the shadow, I am still, verse 2, verse 2, saying, of the Lord, he is my If you get this formula, it will change everything for you. Because what he gave you, how many of you remember uh, like Super Nintendo 
A, B, B, A, backspace, backspace, A, B, B, A, and it gave you a special power. And it, it was a cheat code. He just gave you the cheat code. He said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to abide. Go back. I'm going to dwell. Where I live, where I reside, where I stay is in the secret place of the Most High. He said, and when I get there, he said, I'll abide under the shadow of the Almighty. While I'm abiding, because a lot of people got that part. They're like, I know how to hide in God. No, you're hiding because you're afraid. You're hiding because you have no other defense. You're hiding because all of your other options didn't quite work out for you. You're hiding because you tried this and you tried that and it didn't work. And now you're like, well, I guess I better. And he said, now, while I am dwelling in a secret place, he said, while I am abiding in that shadow, he said, what I'm doing now is I'm talking smack. He said, I'm letting Satan know that, next, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. No matter what Satan says, soon as you get out there here, you're like, step back, whoop, let me get back in a secret place of the most high. Biden in the shadow of the Almighty. In him will I trust, Satan. Only in him. He is my refuge. He is my rock. He is my strong tower. He is my healer. He is my redeemer. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. And I can abide in the shadow and still have a mouthpiece. He said, because once I learn how to abide... I better learn how to tune my mouth in. And notice what he says. When you do these things, verse 3, surely, huh? Surely, he shall deliver thee, where? From the trap of the fowler and the noisome pestilence, verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. He said, when you do these things, these other things come. Verse five. Thou shalt not of the terror by night. Verse six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in, nor for the destruction. He gave you the cheat code. He said, this is how we live. Verse 9. Because thou hast made, which is my refuge, even the Most High. What? You know, it's funny... We have a thing when we go places, when we leave our house, because we've purposely tried to make our house a place of peace. And so when we leave our house, we like look at each other and go, why did we leave? Because <laughs> everywhere we go, it's crazy out there in these streets. It really, people are angry. It's like, let's, let's get whatever we got to buy. Let's do whatever we got to do. Let's get home. Because these people are out here just tripping. See, because I made my home my habitation. And the problem is most people try to go flirt out in places and then come back and try to build a habitation with God instead of staying in their habitation. 
And he said, the reason why you get this victory is because you stay in your habitation. See, I ain't, I ain't coming out for nobody waving candy at me. <laughs> Come on, you're going to get sick and die. Come on. Come eat it. No. No. Stranger danger. Swiper, no swiping. <laughs> You're not going to make it. You're going to die. You're going to be poor. Come eat this candy. I'm not coming out of my habitation. I'm not being pulled out of changing my mouth, changing my words. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what your mama and them say. If it's contrary to the word of God, Look at Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. Be up to date with the latest sermons and listen to Stone Point Community's podcast. It's also a quick and easy way to share these messages with your friends and family. Stay inspired throughout your week and listen. He said, see, I have set. You know what set means? It means I have ordered it. I have structured it. Um, if, If I told... Michael, for example, to go sit over there. He didn't have to, but if I told him to go sit over there, once he sat down, I set him there. That means I purposely orchestrated and set things. God said, see, I have before this day. What? Verse 16, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, keep his commandments and his statutes and judgments that thou mayest end. And the Lord God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to. He said, I have set before you. I put a, 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 a block in front of you. And over here, I put death and cursing. He said, and here I put life and good. He said, I put them there. I did. He said, but now I'm going to tell you what to do. See, it'd be one thing for God to set those things before you and then back up and go, hmm, I wonder what they're going to do. But he said, I put it in front of you and then I'm going to tell you what to do. I command you this day to Love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that thou mayest and and the Lord thy God shall in the land whither thou goest. He said, if you would do it the way I told you, the whole death thing won't even work for you. He said, it won't even come nigh you. It'll still be there. (laughs) It's there. We're not going to deny that it's there. I'm not going to deny that certain things have tried to come against me. But because I choose a different response, it opens the door to a different. But I have to make the choice. So verse 17 he says, but if thine heart turn away, so thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong the days upon the land, whither thou possess over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you and... Before, therefore, do what? That both thou? He said, I put death and life in front of you. And I'm going to tell you which one to choose. Because if you choose this one, I got you. You choose the other one. He said, I call all of heaven to bear witness against you. There's nothing we can do. And I know you think you're special. I know you think you're cute. 
I know you think you're somehow the exception, but I assure you, you're not. We all have to choose. We all have to make decisions. He said, and if you make the right one, he said, thou Verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord, thou mayest, that thou mayest, for he is, and that thou, wish the Lord, to, to, to. You want to know why he says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Every time you hear Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you ever notice why all three of those are together? He doesn't just say Abraham. He doesn't just say Isaac. He doesn't just say Jacob. He says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is fulfillment of all covenant. All three of them represented different aspects of the fullness. So when he says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what he's telling you is, that I keep my covenant in its totality forever. Therefore, if you do what I ask you to do, the way I'm telling you, he said, you're covered by the shadow of the Almighty. He said, you have kept me as your habitation. How do you do that? His word has preeminence. You understand kingdom versus democracy. You understand when the king said it, he said it. There's no, I don't care what people, the scuttlebutt is on the street. I don't care what the whispers are. Because you know, it's funny when all the whispers go, when the king walks by, everybody shuts up. Because what they'll say to you, they won't say to the king. What they say to you, they won't say in front of. Because they know that the moment they say it in front of someone with authority, They got no voice. But we as believers have become so soft. Look at Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with what? And with the increase of his lips... Death and life, they that love it. Some people love death and don't even know it. Some people are so used to eating death. You ever see some of these things that like uh, other countries and cultures eat and you're like, how could you eat that? Like I saw this whole video, it's, it's disgusting, but... They like put a monkey in a table and they crack his head open, eat his brains right there. It is like, what? I, and they call it a delicacy. I'm like, huh? Huh? I mean, really? How do you do Where did you come up with the idea for that? How did you develop a palate for that? But then here's what my point is, right? How many people develop a palate for something that they think is gourmet, they think is a delicacy. And he said, you're going to eat that. Whatever you choose, you're going to eat. And he said, you'll eat it till you're satisfied. <laughs> and if you increase it, you'll eat that until you're full. Verse, was it 20? Yeah, a man's belly shall be with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips. So then, you know, the very things you speak, you got to guard that. You can't just say everything. You can't just bite off in everything. He said, because you'll become satisfied with it. And then the more you say it, you'll get filled with it. So then 
if you eat negative, right? He said, you'll be satisfied. And if you keep, you'll be filled. How many ever have been in that stage where you, you have had something you really enjoyed and you had way too much? And you go past the stage of satisfied. Now you're like, oh God, why didn't someone tell me? They did. <laughs> but you went. And so the question becomes, what happens when you do that with death? When people are speaking death to you. When people are speaking negative things over your life. God forbid you heard it all growing up as a child. And now you repeat it. And now the fruit of your lips is the fruit of what you live. Never having realized that the very things you keep saying. Poverty works that way. I've seen so many people who struggle with poverty and it's the fruit of their lips. You can hear it in the way they talk. They'll come to me, oh, pastor, I'm believing God for my finances, but. I'm like, but what? Tell me all about this, but let me hear it. Because the moment you say that, it's in your mouth. And now you're eating the fruit of it and mad. And then you quote in scriptures. Lord shall supply all my need according to his... Re- yeah. No, sir. One time. But 90% of the rest of the day, you have lost your habitation. He who only lives in a house an hour a day is still homeless. Well... There is no difference between a man who can't read and a man who won't read. You don't hear me? I'm trying to show you. Thank God. There's going to be a moment. Look at, um, thank God for the Holy Ghost helping us, huh? Let's, let's go to 2 Corinthians. Um, chapter 2, verse 14. During this break, you can pull out your phone to leave a review on our Facebook page. Let us know about your experience here at Stone Point. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to leave one for us on Google as well. We're really looking forward to hear what you have to say about Stone Point. I remember, um, I remember a story that uh, was told to me. I didn't witness it uh, personally, but the, the story came to me on good account, meaning the person who shared it with me, I trust the Holy Ghost in them. And they said, uh, one time they were at a particular church and there was a lady in the church who wanted a husband bad. And she said that, um, she kept saying, there's no good men in this church. She kept saying it. And so, years had gone by. Years had gone by. And I, I want to say, I'm trying to make sure I get the, the account straight, but either a prophet came in or somebody came in, and unbeknownst to them about this woman, this prophet literally stood up and said, you have got to go. And he pointed towards a general area of the wall And he said, you need to leave and go. And then he turned on and he said, there's been a spirit that's been sitting outside this church redirecting men. (laughs) 
they're coming to church. And all of a sudden they're like, I don't want to go there. And the person who's telling the story said, this person had no idea what he's talking about. He just knows this is what happened. So then afterwards, they're having a conversation and he's like, you know, there's this one lady, very precious, dear to us, but she keeps saying that. There's no good men here. She just, that's like her MO. And playing it, Satan stationed He's like, I'm going to church. Get to the parking lot. No, I'm not. People have no idea. They eat the fruit of their lips. And now she's making all the other single ladies eat the fruit of her lips. That's <laughs> soft. <I'm> <laughs> I think I struck a nerve there. I'm starting to know why I told that story. <clears throat> you know how you know how when you in golf, you when you swing, you're supposed to yell four. That's for everybody to pay attention. There's a ball flying in the air, right? Well, stump. <laughs> when you, when you, uh, you know, dig in a trench and your auger hits something, you know you hit a root to a stump. And you kind of got to back up a little bit and get, dig around it and get that stump out of there and you can keep going. Well, guess what? I just felt that stump. <laughs> If you don't pay very close attention to your mouth, you will eat the fruit of it. And there, listen, I have enough problems. And truthfully, I have learned to shut up until I can say the right things. Because the difference between you and an animal is a pause. It's your ability to take a deep breath before you respond. <laughs> and you know what your deep breath is? To get you back in the habitation. You know people will test your inner gangster. You know that, right? People really will test your gangster. Remember we read last week, it'll force your faith life, your faith life out into the open. Your mouth will tell the story every time. And you have to be very, very cautious, very careful, very specific, very purposeful. There are things that I'm telling you, Satan has swung at me that I have not said a word about. I'm like, I refuse to repeat that. I refuse to trust that. I refuse to believe that. My strength is in God. My refuge is in Him. In Him shall I trust. He is my buckler. He is my shield. He is my strengthener. He is my standby. Uh, listen, you, I don't know about y'all. I do talk to myself. I do. Even if it's in my own head. I'm like, Gene Herndon, you got to get it straight. If I'm really mad with myself, I call myself Gene Herndon Ministries. <laughs> You want to know why I do that? Because that's what my wife calls me when she gets mad. <laughs> She's like, Gene Herndon Ministries. I'm like, why you got to bring God into this? <laughs> now I got to act right. <clears throat> or she'll go, would you say pastor? <laughs> I'll be thinking to myself, you know what? <laughs> Thank God for a wife that'll help you. Thank God for a wife that'll help you. My point of all this is to say that the kingdom of God is voice activated. The Bible says the angels excel in strength which hearken unto the voice of his word. You have to be careful 
not only to not say the wrong things, but to learn to fix your mouth to say the right things. Whatever you are believing God for, you need to speak that. You need to continue to water it with the word. Speak it over your life. Speak it into every situation. Don't let Satan get you to the point where your heart's troubled. That's why I said people's hearts fail them for fear. Literally, heart just starts giving up because you allow it to be troubled. You allow it to be afraid. And if Jesus told you, don't let it be afraid, then it must be possible. If he told you, don't let it get troubled, it must be possible. But it's only possible in him, amen? Amen. Well, Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing in our midst. We thank you for the word you've given us. Father, we know that even James said it's hard to tame the tongue. And he said no man can tame it. Only the Holy Ghost is capable of helping us to tame our tongues. But we thank you that we'll be mindful of everything we say, that we'll say the right things. If we're used to griping and complaining all the time, we'll remind ourselves that gripers get the vipers. We will understand and remain clear that the Bible calls us royalty, calls us a royal priesthood, that we have the rights to contain and to control the things that Satan tries to loose and leash into our lives. So we thank you for the gift of your son. The blood of Christ gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. The blood of Christ gives us peace when the world's in chaos. The blood of Christ rescues us from sickness. It rescues us from poverty. It rescues us from bad relationships and bad situations. The blood of Christ is shed abroad for us that we understand who we are and whose we are. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. I hope you'll subscribe so you can receive the latest podcast to keep encouraged and inspired all through the week. Help us to continue to share the message of hope with those all around the world. Visit scc.church or click the link in the description to partner with us today. We hope you share this message with a friend and be sure to follow us on social media. We're praying for you. I know God's best is still ahead. We will see you next time.